Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike. You guys are welcome with me and Mike is Intellectual Corner. On today's episode, we are diving back into simple history. This is how long did a person stay alive after being guillotined? And yeah, without further ado, we're just going to go right into it. So let's go. <clears throat> how long did a person's head stay alive after being guillotined? Beheading as a form of execution has been around for centuries. By 1792, during the time of the French Revolution, it had become a highly efficient and quick form of execution in the shape of the now famous guillotine. Yeah, I believe it was considered the most humane way to go because it was such, considered such a quick way because of the, how it was and all that. I still wouldn't want it that way. Now famous guillotine. King Louis XVI himself signed the bill that made the guillotine the official method of execution. The guillotine was a tall wooden structure first used in revolutionary France for beheading someone using a heavy slanted blade that suddenly dropped down a set of vertical grooves. It would usually chop the condemned person's head off in one clean action, whereupon the severed head would unceremoniously drop into a basket below. Dr. Joseph Ignis Guillotine, who it was named after, claim that the guillotine made execution at and obviously how would he know because has to be the dumbest people in the class that I mean, and for people to actually listen to him. the guillotine made execution you know? as painless as possible however later on the device was also known as madame la guillotine la dame the lady la veuve the widow le rassoir national the national razor and louis set but was the execution by it truly painless? There is a famous story about the execution of Charlotte Corday by the guillotine in 1793 during the French Revolution. Just after she had been beheaded, a member of the crowd leapt forward and slapped poor Charlotte across the face to see if she was still conscious. It's reported that her face then blushed at the indignity of being slapped. There are even stories of how heads blinked after being guillotined. Antoine Lavoisier was a French scientist at the height of the French Revolution in 1794. He was condemned to death during the Reign of Terror and supposedly agreed to blink after his head was guillotined as one last experiment for science. His servants noted that Lavoisier blinked up to 15 seconds after the execution. Though there are many stories like this claiming that lucid decapitation or consciousness exists momentarily after beheading, and though these stories are based on real people but, and um, real my thing is biologically it would kind of have to stay alive for a little bit because there's still um oxygen in the brain there's still blood in the brain um for a little bit until it you know comes back out but that's all it needs for it to work so i would think that it we would kind of be like that we kind of be like a real maybe like super i don't really know how to explain what that would be like i feel like you would probably just feel like open air on the bottom of your neck and just pain for I don't know, you know, just repeat. beheading. And though these stories are based on real people and real events, they are most likely exaggerations or anecdotes that have become embellished over time by countless retellings. However, it's often been wondered by scientists how long the head keeps on functioning after it's been guillotined from the body. One of the chief reasons for the introduction of the guillotine was that it was deemed to be very humane but some factions in the medical community were seriously questioning this. Dr. Samuel Thomas Summering theorized that in fact a decapitated head could continue to live and feel for up to a full 15 minutes after being guillotined and therefore the suffering was worse than death by hanging. But Dr. Jean Celedo, a leading pioneer of modern day medicine at the time, counter-argued that the difference between killing a person or a butcher killing an animal by severing its head resulted in the same effect, immediate death and total end and of life. And obviously we, we know that for now as that is not true at all because we, I mean, there is a freaking chicken went back in the 50s or whatever that lived for another five years after being beheaded. All it had to do is be fed like little droplets or whatever through his neck hole. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's pseudoscience where you know, Others, such as Pierre-Jean-Georges Cabanas, argued that victims did not suffer once guillotined because the nape of the neck is where death can be caused instantly in people and animals. 
The twitches and the severed heads were, in his opinion, purely mechanical muscle movements without consciousness. But again, that doesn't make sense. Why would anything right here constitute an immediate death? It would, anything right here constitutes a death because of bleeding out, usually. You know what I'm saying? So, just saying. You know, I have a morbid uh, selection. I don't, I don't uh, But yeah, definitely. There has been many well-documented cases of animals like chickens, cockroaches, frogs, snakes, and praying mantises surviving for a long period of time after they've been decapitated. For example, there are many accounts and videos of rattlesnakes that have been beheaded and still have been able to bite people with their head. Because the guillotine was used in France all the way up until 1977, there has been scientific research carried out using more advanced methodology on actual guillotine human heads. It has been widely reported that sometimes you will see some eye and mouth movements from a guillotined head, but today scientists are mostly convinced that this is just involuntary reflex actions that linger on in the aftermath. But still doubt and conflicting reports linger about this whole issue. One of the most compelling accounts of consciousness being said to still exist for a significant amount of time after being guillotined was in 1905. Henri Languille was executed by the device in Orleans, France. Dr. Gabriel Borio observed that the decapitated head was still twitching, and when he called out the man's name, his eyes looked upwards and stared directly at the doctor. It was claimed that this lasted for between 25 to 30 seconds. Though later, in 1939, the Journal of the American Medical Association thought Wario was exaggerating his account of what happened, as other witnesses that had been present at the execution said life only seemed to last for a maximum of 10 seconds, and that the man's reactions were less pronounced. Today, son... Whenever he called him, he probably like, looked at him, but it was like really slightly more... That's really creepy to think about. Um, kind of makes me kind of wonder why I picked this to be for a reaction, but, you know, it's interesting, it's interesting stuff, and it makes for a great conversation, so that's why, but yeah. Scientists agree that once the victim is guillotined, the separated head and the body dies from a combination of things. Shock, blood loss, loss of blood pressure, and anoxia, which is the total depletion of the level of oxygen within the body. The separated body, as such, lives for about another 60 seconds until the heart finally stops beating. As for the decapitated head, scientists say that it can technically have enough oxygen stored for metabolism to continue for about seven seconds. Though parts of the body may live on for a very short time after being guillotined, the catastrophic effect of being decapitated means that any consciousness would be extinguished almost instantly. So for about two to three seconds, the brain may still be functioning, but any intelligence would be in a fixed, unresponsive, comatose state, unaware of anything. But there has still not been conclusively proven evidence one way or another if consciousness really remains significantly after decapitation. Maybe in time we'll find out what really happens in those short moments before life is extinguished. <clears throat> Hello, Simple History fans. Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, so I guess, um... Thank you guys for joining me on my most uh, morbid of uh, reactions that I've done in a while. I, again, I didn't think about it whenever I picked it, but I mean, it's really interesting to think about. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things where it's like, ah, it's so morbid, but it's really interesting to actually talk about and think about. And it's, I'm sure it is something that at least all of us have thought about at least once in, in, in our life. If, even if you don't want to admit it, you probably thought about this at least once. You know, I thought, why not? So in any, in any case, so if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys when I see you. I'm out. Peace.